Hey guys, welcome back. Well, as you know from the last video, I was having some issues with my remote PC setup as I try to transition to a remote mini PC located out by the telescope and get rid of the 15 meter long cable back to the house. But I had been experiencing some issues, mostly seemingly temperature related, and I've been doing some troubleshooting, so I thought I'd share the findings with you. I think they might be useful to you if you're encountering similar situation. So this is the imaging setup that I've been using. I've got the EQ6R outside along with the, in this case, the ED102. And the mini PC is put inside this box. It's powered off of house current and the box kind of keeps it uh, protected from any dew that collects overnight. I'm using Green Swamp Server on the mini PC to interface with the mount. So Nina and PHD2 communicate through Green Swamp Server to control and command the motion of the EQ6R. But I've been finding that on several nights, uh, Green Swamp Server would crash, in which case you lose connection between the mount and PHD2 and Nina, and as a result, you're unguided and you can't control the mount, so that's obviously not a good thing. I've also noticed that there are cases where the Wi-Fi signal out to the mini PC would become very erratic if not just lost altogether. After doing some investigation, I found that on the nights when I was having trouble, it seemed to be when the outside air temperature dropped below about one degree C, but on nights when I successfully was able to get through the night, the temp full temperature range stayed above that critical one degree C limit. And so temperature seemed to be a big factor here. I figured I'd try a heating pad placed in the box to keep the PC warm and possibly eliminate the potential for the intermittent contacts with the USB connections in this uh, fairly inexpensive mini PC that I'm using. This is the uh, close-up of the box. Several modifications that I've made. I took the antenna, which normally would sit out on top of the box, but I've cut a hole in the box and now the stem of the antenna goes down into the box that you can see here and connects to the base and the Wi-Fi connection here and a wire that goes back into the mini PC. Now I need this Wi-Fi antenna to give me a little more uh, signal detection strength for my Wi-Fi signal coming from the house and it seems to be working well although on cold nights I was noticing it was very erratic. And then I've got the heating pad sitting here and the mini PC is just underneath the heating pad. The heating pad has got three different levels to it, a low, medium, and high, and I'm just using it on low. I did some early tests with high, found that I didn't need that much heating. Uh, so the low setting is, is all that is required and it's also plugged into the extension cord that you can see coming into the uh, box here. So this is the only cable going back to the house. It's the extension cord. I've got the blue cables, the data cable going up to the ultimate power box and all of the cameras and whatnot that it has to control. And then this uh, black red cable is the power cable that goes up to the ultimate power box. So there's two cables going up to the mount and then one cable, the power cable coming back to the house that, that plugs into the house current. So there's no issue with power uh, for the mini PC, that's not a problem. It's just a matter, apparently, of keeping it warm. And with any luck, this uh, this little heating pad here can do the trick and, and keep the uh, PC warm throughout the not-so-cold, but cold enough nights we have here in Texas during the winter. Here's some of the results that I got from a couple of nights where I recorded some data. Now I've got the boxes here, and this is the mini PC. It's sitting on a smaller box inside. The mount, it's got a temperature data logger that's just hanging from the back altitude screw on the back of the mount here. And I've got an identical one of these temperature data loggers sitting on this white box just underneath the USB connections here at the mini PC. And then I put the heating pad over that turn it on low and just let it run overnight and you can see the two signals I get from the data logger for the outside air temperature it gets rather cold gets down to minus five degrees at the worst case roughly on this night but the inside the box the temperature is a good 15 to 20 degrees warmer and the net temperature inside the box is actually just a fairly comfortable 15 degrees C so it's certainly not too warm the heating pad just seems to provide a nice, consistent, warm environment throughout the night. If temperature is the main problem here, then this heating pad should certainly solve that. 
As I did throw this question over the fence to the support group for Green Swamp Server, Rob Morgan, who's the developer of Green Swamp Server, uh, wrote back fairly quickly and had some very useful insight and suggested I take a look in the Options tab in Green Swamp Server at this box down here where it speaks of the render capability. The render capability corresponds to the render tier of the PC that I'm using here. Now for my laptop, that I used to use inside the house with a long 15 meter cable. The rendering tier for that computer is tier two, which means that most of the graphics features are handled using graphics hardware acceleration. But my mini PC has a render capability or a render tier of zero, which means there is no hardware acceleration and any graphics has to be handled via software and the chip inside the mini PC is fairly limited. It's not as powerful as the uh, processor I have in the laptop. So this could very well be an issue. The PC may be overloaded by some of the rendering that has to go on with some of the software. And of course, GSS has this pretty cool feature of a 3D visualization of the scope that has to do some rendering. And I would notice on occasion that the outline of the scope would be drawn correctly, but the rendering inside this area would be garbled as just random pixels. So it was clear that there was some issue that I was having with the uh, rendering of this image here. And if you go back and you just click on this, it will turn off the 3D image and replace it just with a static image of a deep space object picture. And that cuts down on the rendering because this rendering has to happen throughout the night. Even though it's a fairly modest looking picture, it's a fairly graphics intensive uh, effort. And apparently if you have a rendering tier zero computer that's trying to run this, it can get bogged down along with uh, the other things it has to do through an imaging session. For those of you who are using Green Swamp Server and you've experienced some crashes, you might check in to the rendering tier of your particular PC you're using by going up to this options tab and seeing what it says. Also, there is a 3D Nina plugin, and I think some people have reported crashes with that, and it may be for the same reason. So you might check that out, disable these features if you're use, using a rendering tier zero computer for your remote PC. Another thing that I've done, Stellarium is a program that I, I use quite a bit, although typically only at the beginning of an imaging session, and then I close it down and, and, and I'm done for the night. But it's a fairly graphics intensive program as well, and down here, near the bottom, you can read out what the frame rate is of the frame of the image that it's generating. And so what I've done is to go into the config.ini file, and in here you can see that there is a minimum and a maximum frames per second setting, and the default settings are an 18 and minimum and a maximum, effectively no maximum, so it could be as high uh, as it wants to be or needs to be. And so what I've done with the mini PC is to drop this down to about 12 to 15, something to that range. So it stays within a fairly low range. I've also taken uh, steps to cut back on some of the other rendering and uh, display features in the version of Stellarium that I have on the mini PC, such as uh, only showing stars with a magnitude of five or brighter. Uh, cutting out uh, satellites, not depicting satellites. I don't load in additional star libraries, uh, simulation of fog and other uh, atmospheric effects, just to try to cut down on the amount of, of graphics rendering that Stellarium is doing. And so far, I haven't had any issues uh, running Stellarium in this reduced configuration, and it hasn't crashed on me either uh, during imaging sessions, which is a, it's a good sign. You might look into dialing back on, on its demands for your remote PC. You don't need all the fancy graphics just to have the functionality that it provides in terms of identifying uh, targets and using it perhaps to control your amount to go to a specific target rather than than using say Nina to go to a specific target. So that's something to look into as well. All right, so the results of my testing over the past uh, several nights is that uh, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that the uh, green swamp server crashes that I was seeing are most likely the combination of cold temperature affecting the USB connections and the very limited graphics capability of my mini PC. And that led me to try out a heating pad. I've been setting it on low and that provides a uh, very comfortable warm environment for the PC. It's kept warm throughout the night. It's not hot by any means and it lasts uh, all night long. So that it seems to be solving the heating problem. 
I learned, thanks to Rob Morgan, I learned about the render tier of a PC, and I learned that uh, basically my PC is the lowest level there is, very limited. There's no hardware acceleration capability whatsoever. Any graphics has to be generated uh, via software, and so that places quite a demand on an otherwise uh, fairly challenged microprocessor in that particular PC. So do what you can to disable those high-demand graphics features, such as the 3D scope graphics in GSS and possibly Nina if you're using that, and also cut down on some of the features in Stellarium to limit its use and demand on a uh, fairly graphics-limited PC. And then finally, I was having uh, occasional and sometimes uh, very annoying uh, Wi-Fi dropouts, also probably due to temperature, uh, between the mini PC using remote desktop. I did find, though, that even though I've had a few of these disconnects recently, even with the heating pad in place, the uh, connections are only lost for about 10 seconds, and it reestablishes the connection, and the apps that were left running when I lost connection are still running when I get access back to the mini PC. And fortunately, I've had no need to run and find my 15-meter-long USB cable, so for now, it looks like at least over the past three to four coldish nights that we've had, I haven't had any disruptions in the performance of Green Swamp Server. The imaging sessions have gone off uh, well overnight and so perhaps my issue with this is solved and I can continue using my mini PC in this remote setup configuration. Okay guys well that's all I've got for today. I just thought I'd update you on the testing I've been doing. Clear skies, keep your computer warm, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.